Chapter 15. Walking to the library, zip my jacket against the wind and take my time getting there. Some of the leaves are off the trees, all colors of red and yellow and orange too. Still no layman in class. I'm almost invisible to E-roll and Clem. Aside from Ruby, with her clothes that always look two sizes too small, who sits in back of me and can't stop talking even to me, no one has much to say. Sometimes when I'm lonely, don't know why, keep thinking I won't be lonely by and by. Langston Hughes' poem comes into my head, drowning out her whispering that ain't really whispering because Mrs. Robinson can hear her clear in front of the room. Ruby, I'm the only one speaking now, Mrs. Robin screams. And just like that, Mr. Hughes's poem disappears. Clem doesn't even look my way since I saw him at the library, which is fine with me. One block from the library, I hear fast steps behind me. I walk faster, and the steps get faster too. And then I hear someone running up behind me. I spin around just as Clem is right at my back, and I step to the curb and curl my hands into fists. Relax, country boy, Clem says, laughing. What you want, I say, mad. I gotta move fast today to get my books. Miss Fulton said Daddy may be home tonight. Just walk into the library is all, Clem says, returning my books. He points to a satchel. I relax a little then, but not much. Thought you only came on Thursdays. Yeah, well, my mama had to work extra for her family. They're having a big to-do party tonight. And you know, white folks can't barely do for themselves, he says, laughing to himself. Clem thinks most of what Clem says is funny. So your mama keeps house, I ask? Yep, for the Franklin family. Live over in Hyde Park. My sister, they're in high school. My sisters, they're in high school. Supposed to be watching me, but they're too busy with their boyfriends. So I can do what I want long as I don't say nothing to our mama. Clem laughs again. Ain't seen Layman round lately. Where's he been? Why you miss him? His smile stretches from ear to ear. Why you miss him? His smile stretches from ear to ear. Can't see nothing but teeth when Clem smiles. I don't care. Just wondering is all. Eroy said he may be going to a different school. Ain't my concern. Ain't he your friend, I ask? Can't believe I'm talking this much to Clem, let alone about Layman. Clem shrugs, and we walk side by side up another block. We must look like a sight. Me tall and thick, Clem short and skinny. Since I'm asking so many questions, I try another. What kind of books do you read? Clem opens a satchel and pulls out a beat-up book with a picture of a map on the cover. This here's a story about a boy and his sisters. They take this boat to an island, and all kinds of things, kinds of things happen to them. I already read the first, but this one's my second. Still got nine more to read. Clem talks so fast, he barely takes a breath. Wish I could take back the question, because I sure don't want to tell him I'm reading poetry. One day, I'm going to join the Navy and travel the world, just like my daddy. Don't get a chance to ask Clem about his daddy in the Navy, because he keeps on. The best part is when they... I'm half listening, wondering why I'm even talking to Clem, but not minding how it feels to be walking with someone, anyone, to the library after school. Thinking it may feel kind of good to talk about books. We get to the corner and cross the street to the library. Head right downstairs. See you later, Clem says, and starts walking... To, book to the bookshelves. Clem, I say before he leaves. My name is Langston. Clem nods, and I go to the desk. Miss Cook isn't here today, but there is an older lady with gray hair. She barely looks up. Put your returns in the slot, she says. Ma'am, I say. She looks up and stares through her little round glasses, saying nothing. Where can I find books on Frost and Gwendolyn Brooks and County Cullen and Dickinson? She sighs. <sighs> Over there with poetry in the 800 section. Now I know what the numbers mean. Call numbers, Miss Cook told me, and she explained how they work. She laughed when I asked how librarians can remember titles, writers, and numbers, too. This woman at the desk says, Poetry, so loud, Clem looks over. I walk fast over to poetry, and I don't see any with the name Dickinson, but I do see one by Robert Frost. I take that, and they even have the book Miss Fulton read with poems by County Cullen, and all the other colored poets. When she showed me, I made sure to remember the words on the cover, Caroling Dusk. I take that one too. I wave goodbye to Clem and leave the library as fast as I can. It's cooler now as I walk home. And even though I miss the Alabama warmth, the cold makes me feel awake. 
I pull out Caroling Dusk and look through the first pages. I walk and read at the same time, trying not to fall off the curbs. Sidewalks are something I can't quite get used to because you always got to pay attention to where you're walking. I get to my building still reading the poetry, different from Langston Hughes, but with words I like. I figure there must be a world of Negro poets I don't even know yet. At the door, I hear sounds from inside the apartment and I hurry to get my keys. Daddy's home. Daddy, I yell as soon as I see him. And then I see Miss Fulton sitting at the table. Daddy smiles big like he missed me. I go to hug him hard and my book hits his side. What's this, Daddy asks. I forgot all about the book in my hand. Something I'm reading for school, I say, my face getting hot. Please don't let Miss Fulton see it. I say over and over in my head. I better be going, she says in a hurry, like she's watching something she shouldn't be. I'll check in on you both later. Son, you say thank Son, you thank Miss Fulton for all she'd done while I was gone, Daddy says. I fold my arm behind my back, hiding the book. Thanks, Miss Fulton. Langston was very good company, she says, smiling at Daddy. I wait till the door closes to let all my questions spill out at once.